This happened to me when I was 15 or 16, currently 22, so a couple of details may be fuzzy, but what we found in the clearing is still very vivid in my mind. At that age, my parents still shipped me off to a summer camp where a small group of guys led by two guides would take month-long trips by canoe into the wilderness. This particular trip was through Blood Vein River system that leads from northern Ontario to Lake Winnipeg in Manitoba. A fair amount of creepy stuff happened on this trip, such as strange trappers' cottages and the like, but the event that stands out is the evening we took the wrong portage trail. It had been a long day and we were about to start losing daylight, so everyone was pretty anxious to make camp and get some rest. We spotted a small games trail that seemed to be the right one, so we started down it without checking the map since we were tired and hungry and just wanted to get some dinner. It's at this point in the story I should mention that we were very far from any road. So far, in fact, that we were told that the only way to get to this part of the route was by canoe, kayak, or float plane. A couple of kilometers down the trail, it opened up into a small clearing. Right away, we were caught off guard by a school bus sitting in the dead center of this field. Even at this distance, we could see that the windows were broken, and all the tires seemed to be flat. The closer we got, the more we noticed, like the fact that there were burn marks around the edges of the windows, and that the doors were barred shut from the outside with steel rhubarb. The guide told us not to go any closer and went to investigate further. After a couple minutes, he came back and very blankly told us that we found the wrong trail and that we needed to head back as quickly as possible. Of course, being a group of teenage boys, we immediately ignored him and ran up to check the bus out. I wish I hadn't. Because up to this point, things had just been kind of odd, but when we looked into the door, things got downright creepy. The floor of the school bus was littered all over with toddler-sized shoes. Needless to say, we got the hell out of there and we put as much distance between us and the clearing before the sun went down. I don't know what happened in that bus, or how it got somewhere that should have been impossible, nor do I want to. Whoever left the bus there, let's not meet. This happened on Halloween 2014 when I was 21 years old. It's the only time something like this has ever happened to me, and it really stuck with me. My friends Ira, Sasha and I had gotten out of school at 10pm. We dressed in costume that day because we planned to go to a Halloween party once we got out. My friends had that Mean Girls type costume. The hardcore girls just wore lingerie and animal ears and had already began drinking at the station. The train pulls up and we get seated, but when the doors close, the train doesn't start up. After five minutes we hope for an announcement or the attendant to let us out. By 15 minutes people started to get nervous. A man in sweatpants and a stained t-shirt is running down the escalator, holding a plastic bag. He starts banging on the doors which we're sitting in front of. He's begging us to open them. He must have been screaming since I was able to hear him through the closed doors. Then he started pointing at my friends and I, using the other hand to pound the glass. There's an emergency speaker intercom next to every door and I go to the doors on the other side of the train so I wouldn't have to see the man, but he follows me. When I push the button and request help, he starts screaming even louder, saying that I'm a little bitch for telling on him. I just wanted the train to leave. I needed to leave, and this situation was making me and everyone on board the train panic. Nobody was responding to us, Five minutes later the doors fling open and the man gets in. We rush out the other door and an announcement is made that another train will be here in 25 minutes and that they were sorry for the inconvenience. The next 25 minutes were absolutely terrifying to us. At first I would thought she felt someone breathing on her but once she turned around she just saw the crowd. I felt a hand touch my thigh, a 
and Sasha felt her headband being pulled off. We rush to the other side of the platform. There's no security in sight, and I smell his rancid breath as he whispered, You're trapped like rats in a bottle, and I'm going to smash it, bitch. You can run, but it won't matter. I see two officers coming down the stairs and scream to them. I can hear him saying something as they get closer and the rustling of a plastic bag getting closer. I tell the officers everything and give them the description. He's still on the platform and I point him out. He's holding an old cell phone that looks crushed and pretending to be on the call. He's looking dead at us. The officers assured us that they keep an eye out for him. We had the police escort us through two trains. We didn't go to the party that night and we couldn't find out why the train had stopped or why the police officers were even searching the station. I don't know if this is related but the next morning the local news reported that a woman had been stabbed multiple times at the same station. I don't know if it was the same man that stalked us on the platform or if the police had been looking for him but the man who stabbed that woman wasn't caught.